Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my home. Today I'm going to be talking about the first day of the Royal State Visit to France 2023 and the main sort of headline that I take home from this video is I'm going to talk about how I think the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has done King Charles dirty. We'll get to that in a moment but first of all like with everything let's kind of go from the start. So yesterday when I made my video we just had a couple of images back of uh, King Charles and Queen Camilla arriving off the aeroplane and of course touching down on French soil for the first time as King. Um, now King Charles as Prince of Wales visited France many many times as did his his late mother Queen Elizabeth II. She planted trees and had many state visits and occasions uh, to, with France and of course in turn hosted many uh, state banquets and state visits um, with French visiting uh, presidents. So this is a big political move. I spoke yesterday about how I thought perhaps the first uh, state visit could have been to a Commonwealth country and it wasn't lost on me the fact that Germany and France, um, both of course major European Union players, were chosen by the British government. It's not the royal household, it's not King Charles that chooses where he wants to go on state visits. Um, state visits are orchestrated at the request of the British government. Let's make no mistake about that because that is very important for what I'm going to discuss later about Rishi Sunak. Um, so, touchdown. Uh, the doors opened and of course we got to see the amazing uh, outfit, pink outfit, that Camilla was wearing. Now, a lot of people were saying pink. You know, normally royals would kind of dress in the kind of host nation uh, colours. And so we weren't expecting pink. Uh, and I looked up, you know, pink. What is, what could be the significance of pink? And pink is seen as an aristocratic colour um, in kind of old French, French history, so to speak. So it could have been a nod um, to the aristocracy of a time gone by. But other than that, I couldn't really find anything about why she would be wearing pink other than perhaps it's a favourite colour, perhaps she just liked the outfit. So if you know of any other reason why she may have chosen a pink outfit that I may have overlooked or I just simply don't know about, do let me know in the comment section below. I was disappointed, not with the outfit. I loved the outfit, um, regardless of the pink. I liked the style of it, I liked the cut of it, but I was majorly disappointed with no brooch. There was no brooch. Now, of course, she was wearing a kind of pink um, like coat over the main dress. So, you know, was there a brooch hidden underneath? It's not normally done. Normally you would see, um, for example, Her Late Majesty and even Camilla herself wearing a brooch on the actual main body of the coat. Um, so I don't think that there was a brooch. I was very disappointed. I think the uh, Queen's flower basket, the, the late Queen's flower basket brooch would have been amazing and it would have been a perfect opportunity to kind of showcase um, a piece of jewellery previously worn by Her Late Majesty. Um, so that was that. I was kind of a bit disappointed. Then some people on Twitter or X, as it's known now, uh, I think X as in you should stay away from it, people were saying on X, um, why was she walking funny off the plane uh, as they were met on the tarmac? She was walking kind of with her hand up. Now, if you hadn't noticed, it was a windy, windy old day um, and lots of people's hairs were flapping of course she was wearing a hat. I think her hand was kind of walking like this just in case there was a gust of wind and she had to grab onto a hat or she had to sort of flick her hair out of her eyes or out of her face. So that's why I think her hand was kind of up uh, like that. Now of course going back to the greeting some people were saying that Camilla snubbed uh, Mrs. Macron. And I don't think that was the case. So when they were walking, I will try and pop some footage up so you can actually see what I mean. Um, Charles 
the king veers off to meet President Macron, and Camilla basically kind of follows him, but Mrs Macron kind of steps out to greet Camilla, and then Camilla, like, follows Charles. So it looks like Camilla is kind of snubbing Mrs Macron. I don't think that was the case. I think it was a, a protocol breach or a protocol... I don't know. I think, basically, I think Mrs Macron um, breached some protocol. I think everybody was briefed on where to go and what to do and who to greet first, as is customary for these sorts of royal engagements. Uh, everything is not normally left to chance. Things are planned, including the greetings and the correct protocol. I think the correct protocol that had been outlined and agreed prior to the visit was that the King and President Macron would greet each other first. Then President Macron would move on to greeting Queen Camilla. Then Charles, the King, would greet uh, Mrs. Macron, and then in turn, Camilla would greet Mrs. Macron. And if you look at the video footage, I think that's what would have played out. Um, so eventually, uh, Camilla did greet Mrs. Macron when I think it was uh, kind of the agreed protocol to do so. It just looked a little bit clunky. And I, like I said, I think the misstep was with Mrs. Macron. She kind of almost overstepped the president, uh, whereas... Um, Camilla was trying to keep, you know, that little bit behind Charles, who is the king, who still ranks higher than his queen consort. So I just think it was a protocol misunderstanding. And I'm sure from the video footage and clip, you will see that quite clearly. Right, let's move on. I think we've tackled that. There is no beef between Mr., uh, Mrs. Macron and Queen Camilla. They were seen being very, very happy and cordial, um, later on in the in the day. Um, so then they had a really good reception. Uh, and of course, Charles, um, then they got changed ready for the state banquet. And we saw Camilla wearing this kind of gorgeous navy blue kind of dress with this cape that was quite billowing. Again, we didn't see a tiara. And I think a lot of people were looking forward to a state banquet. Of course, it was held at Versailles in the in the Hall of Mirrors. Um, how wonderful and fabulous that would be. I've never been to Versailles, so that is something... In fact, I've never been to Paris, so uh, I've always said, if ever I do get to go to Paris, I would make that extra step to go to the Palace of Versailles. Um, an amazing place, and the Hall of Mirrors, so historical and gorgeous. Uh, it was the most appropriate setting, I think, for this very important state visit. Uh, and, and France and the UK are both taking it incredibly seriously, um, despite uh, despite a checkered kind of history, I suppose, in relationships. Uh, the Entente Cordiale uh, does still exist, it seems. So Camilla's outfit, I loved it. I loved the blue on her. I loved the sapphires. Of course, the sapphire necklace was part of uh, Queen Elizabeth, the late Queen Elizabeth's um, set. Of course, there are matching earrings, but I don't think she actually wore the matching earrings. I think she wore a different pair of sapphire earrings. There is also a tiara that goes with the set. I don't think it was sort of made originally for the set, but it kind of, it matches in style. Uh, that is often was, was often worn by Her Late Majesty, and there is a photo of her wearing the entire set. Uh, queen, the, the late Queen also acquired a, a bracelet that kind of matched. So uh, I don't think any of the set was particularly, apart from maybe the necklace and the earrings, they weren't sort of intended to be a set, but they ended up being a set. So I'd have loved to have seen Camilla wearing the sapphire tiara. Um, I think she's worn that one previously before anyway. But no, it was. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't that that sort of event. <laughs> Nobody was wearing a tiara, so I was quite disappointed, to be honest. But anyway, I soon got over. Well, no, I'm not over it. I'm not over it, to be honest. Anyway, Charles' um, historic um, speech. Basically, let's give a little bit of a backstory on how these things are done, and then we'll talk about what happened. Uh, and why I think Rishi Sunak, the British Prime Minister, did the King dirty. So, like I said before, these visits are not taken to chance. They are state visits that are sanctioned and um, will have been 
you know, France and Germany will have been put forward as the first official state visits for political reasons by the government of the day, which is currently the Conservative Party led by Rishi Sunak. Um, any speeches, the the programme of events, who the king and queen will be meeting, where they will be meeting, will all have been kind of constructed by the royal household, but will have been kind of sanctioned and passed off by the British government. When it comes to speeches, the British government might even sort of want particular themes spoken about um, or they might want to take things out or put things into the speech. And that is kind of batted around between the royal household and uh, the government of the day, between themselves, until something is finalised and agreed and kind of set in stone. So Charles, whatever Charles has you know, said on that tour in terms of a speech or some kind of delivery um, is sanctioned by the government. Important to remember. So Charles addressed in French. Now, I'm not a French speaker myself, so I don't know how fluent it sounded to someone who's, who actually speaks and understands French. But it seemed from an outsider looking in that it was very fluent. Uh, I think he practised. Uh, all the enunciations seemed to be there, although I still heard uh, Charles's kind of accent and tone within it. His, you know, that didn't change with him speaking in French. Um, so I w I'm very interested to know from from French speakers how Charles actually did with the, with the delivery of that speech. So that's very interesting. So leave a comment uh, if you if you wonder if you understood what Charles was saying. Um, one of the things that he spoke about in his speech is of course the environment and about the UK and France sort of going net zero. Now in the UK, uh, for many years now, we've had targets set in place um, and lots of industry and business and people were kind of gearing up to kind of meet those targets when those targets came. Um, so let me read what, um, what Charles actually said. Um, he said, let us therefore cherish and nurture our Entente Cordiale. Let us renew it for future generations so that I would like to propose. It also becomes an Entente pour la durabilité, which means agreement for sustainability. I do apologise for my terrible French. Uh, in order to tackle the global climate and biodiversity emergency more effectively, let us stride forward with hope and courage and do so together. So that basically came as Rishi Sunak basically harpooned the UK's, or kind of changed the UK's stance uh, on going net zero. Rishi has kind of said, I suppose, that, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money for ordinary families to go net net zero. Therefore, he's railing back on those targets. I think now for cars uh, being fully electric, it's now 2035 rather than 2030. And there's lots of other things that have been kind of scaled back. Now, we're not going to get into a debate on this channel about the whys and what falls of going net zero. But it kind of made people think on Twitter, again, X, whatever you want to call it, that uh, that Charles overstepped his mark uh, as king and was trying to be over political over the British government. And I think it was the other way around. Like I said, all this speech will have been sanctioned. So the British government will have known beforehand that Charles was going to say that about the environment. And of course, they all know that Charles has had such a long standing stance on the environment and green issues. Uh, Charles is very much in favour of saving the planet, as I think many of us are. Um, so that would have been passed and sanctioned. So literally the day before Charles delivers this speech, Rishi Sunak, you know, goes against what I suppose he's already sanctioned for a state political speech uh, on a state visit. Um, it beggars belief. I definitely think Rishi Sunak has done the dirty. And I think he's trying to let Charles kind of take the rap for that. I think uh, Rishi Sunak knew that his change of policy is a kind of 50-50 split. People will either love it or hate it. I don't think there's going to be much 
in the middle, and I think to deflect attention away from himself for those people who are not in favour of him railing back those targets, Charles is the scapegoat, and I don't think that that is fair at all. Um, if Rishi knew that he was going to do this, and I don't think this is something that he's done just for a whim, then he should have told the palace and they should have changed the speech. Charles was just delivering what had already been agreed. And it's left people thinking, like I said before, that Charles has overstepped his mark and is being too political and wading into these issues. It would have been sanctioned by the British government. That's all I'm saying. Um, so, so yes, that is my thoughts and opinions on that. Um, I am going to leave it for today. Of course, throughout the day, the Royal State visit continues. There will be even more photos um, and video clips going. Oh, did you see the, the red arrows as well going over with the with the French planes with the red, white, and blue? That looked spectacular too. Um, so. Tomorrow, I will come back with another update, anything that's happened, and I'll give you my honest um, opinions and applied British royal family knowledge on what is going on today. Um, please bear in mind that I am not just somebody who has plonked themselves in, on YouTube talking about the royal family who doesn't know what they're talking about. There are many of those people out there. Um, I have been doing this since 2015, and I have a lifetime of acquired knowledge about the royal family, um, which I apply to what is going on in the here and now. Um, so thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit that bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me to you all and goodbye.